So let's put this together and try solving some real quadratic equations with complex roots. The method is the same. We're going to factorise and then use the null factor law. The only thing that's different is that factorising is going to involve complex numbers. So let's try it. First, we're going to work out the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac. It's going to save us some effort if we know the discriminant is a positive perfect square or zero. So b squared is 4 minus 4 times 4 is 16. That's negative 12. It's going to involve thirds and it's going to involve i. So we may as well just go straight to completing the square. As I always do, I'm going to write the zero on the left because it makes it neater for what's coming next. I can stop writing equals zero, making sure I line up and leaving enough space, and it's just simpler to start with the zero on the left. OK, first take out the factor of 4. Make it monic so I can complete the square. Half x plus a quarter. All right, um, I need to complete the square. So plus a half x, leave some space. Don't forget my quarter, write it now so I don't forget later. If I'm completing the square, I have to always add half of this coefficient squared. If I'm adding a quarter squared, I better subtract a quarter squared. Leave the 4 out the front. And we're going to go, this part is x plus a quarter squared. Now I have a sixteenth. I'm going to need this in sixteenths. Well, that's 4 sixteenths. So 4 times x plus a quarter squared. Minus 1 plus 4 is plus 3 sixteenths. Well, it's a sum of squares, so we're going to solve it using complex, which we knew was coming anyway. And it's going to involve a third root 3, which we knew already. 4 times, I'm going to skip some of the brackets, x plus a quarter plus root 3 on 4, that's the square root of this. This sign doesn't change, x plus a quarter. This sign does, minus root 3 on 4. Um, I've done something stupid. I have done something stupid. I forgot my i. I forgot my i's, because this was a sum. So I needed i squared here. Whoops, I went... Now I made a mess of it. I won't write it, but you could have written that line again with minus 3i squared. You don't have to, as long as, unlike me, you actually remember to write your i. OK, if that's the case, you can go straight to the solution. From there, this is x minus something, and this is x minus something, so those are your two solutions. Because you probably haven't done this before, I'll actually write the extra line. You don't have to write this, but if you wanted to, you could write one more line, x minus, they're both over 4, and what are they? 1 minus i root 3, or root 3i, it doesn't matter. And this one is x minus, no, I haven't got it right, negative 1 minus i root 3. I'm making mistakes today. Um, negative 1 plus i root 3 all over 4. So now it's very clear those are my two solutions. Therefore, x equals negative 1 plus or minus i root 3 all over 4. Be very careful that you write your um, negative sign in the right place over the whole fraction 
Um, you don't want the negative out the front. That would be a different solution. Because we know these are always going to be complex conjugates, we can write it with a plus or minus. Of course, there is another way to solve this quadratic equation, and that is to use the quadratic formula. You will find yourself doing all the same steps as you go. Why is that? Well, it's because the quadratic formula, you can derive the quadratic formula, figure out what, it, what, what the quadratic formula is, by writing ax squared plus bx plus c and completing the square. Let me apply the quadratic formula to this equation. My equation was, I'm going to leave that there if I can, I'm not sure it'll still fit. 0 equals 4x squared plus 2x plus 1. Well, that means x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, which remember we worked out up here, negative 12, all over 2a. So, negative b is negative 2, plus or minus the square root of, I'm going to write it out even though we worked it out before, b squared is 4, minus 4ac is 16, all over 8. Well, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 12, all over 8. Uh, that is negative 2 plus or minus What's root 12? Root 12 is root 4 root 3, which is 2 root 3. So I've got this with an i. Um, i times 2 root 3, all over 8. Well, I've got a common factor of 2 everywhere. So I can write that as negative 1 plus or minus i times root 3, all over 4. And look, it's the same solution.